The bulk of the credit for pioneering single women sitcoms has always kind of gone to the Mary Tyler Moore show. But a half of a decade before she was tossing her hat into the Minnesota air, Anne Marie was strutting under the bright lights of Broadway in That Girl. Marlo Thomas in her lead role in this series that ran from 1966 to 1971 fought for a vision that she had for the young, modern 60s woman and how it should be portrayed on TV. Danny Thomas's beautiful daughter would go on to win four Emmys, a Grammy, and a Golden Globe, a Peabody, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. You can still see her today as a spokesman for the charitable St. Jude Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee that her dad started years before. Marlowe's character of Anne Marie is an aspiring and only sporadically employed actress who moves from her hometown of Brewster, New York to try to make it big in New York City. She has an assortment of temp jobs to help support herself. She has a boyfriend named Donald Hollinger, played by Ted Bissell, and he's a writer for a magazine called News View. Her concerned parents, Lou and Helen, are played by Lou Parker and Rosemary DeCamp. The group of friends that Anne and Donald hang around with are played by Bernie Capel, Ruth Buzzy, and Reva Rose. That girl was developed by writers Bill Persky and Sam Denoff, who had served as writers on The Dick Van Dyke Show, which is one of the shows that Marlo Thomas's father, Danny Thomas, was closely associated with in the 1960s. This guy was a powerhouse in Hollywood. He had so many shows running out of Desilu Studios that it'd just make your head spin. And these were terribly successful shows too, like the Dick Van Dyke Show, the Andy Griffith Show, and his own Make Room for Daddy. The title of that girl was initially called Miss Independent. During the pre-production and some of the production of the show, that was the working title for the series. It had a real personal meaning to Marlo Thomas. That was the nickname that had been given to her by her father, Danny. One thing that you will notice is that the Thomas family tried to include the entire family in any production they did. This is true when you look back on the Andy Griffith show and you see Danny Thomas's brother in almost every episode of the show. He has more appearances on the show than any other actor other than the primary actors. And you see this pattern happen with any show that they were involved in, including That Girl. The season three episode, My Sister's Keeper, featured most of the Thomas family. It had Marlo's sister, Terry. She played a major role as a nun. Her brother, Tony Thomas, turns up as a drummer, And in the final scene, Danny Thomas bumps into Anne Marie. He's dressed as a priest. Naturally, she says, excuse me, father, which really is her father. And if you think about it, her sister playing a nun is also an inside joke, too, she being a sister. Marlo Thomas was almost in a series called Two's Company instead of this. She did a pilot for the show that was about a couple who had been married for a week or so. This particular two's company had no relation to the 1973 pilot of the same name, featuring John Amos, nor is it related in any way to Three's Company. This pilot never made it to become a series, but the network really liked what they saw in Marlo Thomas, and they also saw the possibility of a huge corporate sponsor. During this time, a corporate sponsor could either make or break a television show. And Claire All helped get that girl off the ground. They loved Thomas' work in Two's Company, and the network believed that this actress was really ready to headline her own series. At that time, they were looking for a girl to sell their shampoo, and they needed a young, rising female star. Without the backing of the beauty company, We might not have ever had that girl. The running gag of having the pre-credit sequence ending with a character referring to Anne as that girl 
was originally only supposed to be used in the pilot, as it was believed that they would never be able to keep up that pace of finding new ways to make that work in the opening conversation. But they did. Somehow they were able to work it in to almost every episode. Now it's said by Marlo Thomas and at that time her dad that the relationship between Anne on the show and her father Lou was loosely based on her real life relationship with her father Danny. Now, in the original unaired pilot episode, Ted Bissell's character was, believe it or not, named Donald Blue Sky, not Hollinger. He played Anne's agent instead of a magazine reporter. During that episode, he explains that his last name came from his heritage of being part Cherokee Indian. In that episode, Harold Gould played Anne's father and Penny Stanton played Anne's mother. The series actually had three separate opening themes. Season one was a more subdued instrumental opening that also had a different video sequence. Seasons two through four was the now familiar, more upbeat, jazzy, swinging, instrumental type. Sung lyrics were added in the fifth and last season's version to give the opening a similar, deeper context in the wake of the new, very successful Mary Tyler Moore show. The well-regarded Earl Hagen wrote all the music for the opening themes. Besides writing the themes to numerous other shows, Hagen is most notable for writing the tune to and the whistling theme for The Andy Griffith Show. Now, it's pretty interesting that a famous book helped really sell the show to the network. With Claire All and ABC really hungry to get Marlo Thomas in a sitcom, they were tossing around ideas between themselves and Marlo Thomas. Marlo wanted her show to be unlike anyone that was on TV. She didn't want to be a woman that was a mom or a wife. After thinking it over, she gave the head of ABC Programming a copy of the popular 1964 book called The Feminine Mystique. This went on to be the spark that helped the programming department decide that it was time for a series about a single working woman on TV. Marlo Thomas absolutely refused to have her character get married on TV. Both ABC and Clairol really pushed the series to have her get married to Donald at the very end of the series. Thomas just fought like heck to keep marriage out of their relationship, though she did, although somewhat reluctantly, allow for the couple to get engaged. She argued with the producers about this. She said, absolutely not. There will be no wedding on this show. First of all, she felt like it was a betrayal to all the young women who had been following the show and finding their own independence. She felt like that if she showed her character getting married in the last show, that she would be saying the only way for them to be happy is to get married. She felt like that was a dangerous precedence to set. The series was supposed to have returned for a sixth season, as the ratings were still really high and contracts were already in place as was often the case with shows in that era of television. Production disagreements led to an unexpected pulling of the plug at the end of season five. It's fun to go back and take a look at these episodes of That Girl. It's truly a funny show. It brings back a lot of memories from that time in the late 60s and early 70s. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.